Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, so the topic that I am taking today is acute appendicitis and it is an important topic for the practical examination and sometimes can come in the theory also. Uh, appendix is a vestigial organ that is present at the base of the cecum and whenever there is acute inflammation of appendix then it is known as acute appendicitis. And acute appendicitis is the most common surgical emergency that is encountered where a young child or adolescent commonly presents with acute abdomen. So, and it is more common in the males. So, this scenario you have to remember for a possible problem based question. And the etiology for acute appendicitis is mainly obstructive. So, it is mainly caused because of obstruction, and that obstruction can be due to a fecolith obstructing the lumen of the appendix or a stone. Worms, this, this you have to remember, pinworm. Pinworm can cause obstruction in appendix and it is also known by the name oxyuresis vermicularis or antrobius vermicularis. And uh, lymphoid hyperplasia can sometimes be seen in the children. So lymphoid follicles, they are seen in the submucosa of appendix and due to certain viral infections, they can uh, become hyperplastic and that can also cause the uh, obstruction of the lumen of the appendix. Uh, rarely tumors can also cause obstruction uh, in appendix and then there are uh, non-obstructive causes but they are very less common and commonly due to the systemic infections there can be uh, acute appendicitis. But obstructive causes you have to remember that is they, they are the most common. Now whenever there is obstruction in the appendix, then what will happen? There will be increase in the intraluminal pressure because whenever the, there is obstruction, the mucosa of the appendix, it keeps on secreting the various secretions into the lumen. So whenever there is uh, increased secretion inside the appendix and there is obstruction, so that will cause the increased intraluminal pressure in the acute appendicitis. This will cause further cause the inflammation. So uh, we come to the pathogenesis of acute appendicitis. So what happens? There is obstruction and because of obstruction, there is decrease in the venous outflow of the appendix and also there will be increased intraluminal pressure as I already told you that there are increased secretions within the appendix and that will cause the increased uh, intraluminal pressure within the appendix. Now, be because of these two factors, there will be ischemic injury to the appendix and whenever there is ischemia, that will lead to inflammation. Secondly, because of the obstruction, there will be stasis of the contents of the appendix because you know that there are secretions continuing within the lumen and they will become static because of this obstruction. So whenever there is stasis, there will be proliferation of bacteria like E. coli, bacteroids fragilis and that again bacterial proliferation will also stimulate the process of inflammation. As you know that uh, causes of inflammation include the bacterial infection, it includes the ischemic injury. So these factors will result in the inflammation of the appendix. So, so basically the obstruction is leading to inflammation by various mechanisms like increased intraluminal pressure and decreased venous outflow which is leading to the ischemic injury and the obstruction is also leading to stasis of the contents causing bacterial proliferation and ultimately inflammation. So uh, clinically there is inflammation uh, so that will cause the perium, the pain pain is the most important symptom. The pain initially will be in the periumbilical region but later on it will get localized to the uh, site where appendix is present. So that is the McBurney's point. So McBurney's point, uh, how you get the McBurney's point? So you draw a line between the umbilicus and the anterior right anterior superior iliac spine and the junction between the right one third and the left two third that is called the McBurney's point and at the McBurney's point there will be pain and tenderness. So this is a very important uh, diagnostic feature uh, used to diagnose appendicitis. 
Additionally, there will be nausea, vomiting, and low-grade fever, because since there is an inflammatory process, so there will be fever. And in the blood, there will be increased WBC counts. Ultrasound findings will help in the diagnosis of appendicitis. Now, uh, pain in this region can lead to a differential diagnosis of mesenteric lymphadenitis or acute salpingitis in case of females. There's, that is inflammation of the fallopian tube. But again, in females, ectopic pregnancy can mimic symptoms of acute appendicitis. And lastly, inflammation in a Meckel's diverticulum that will also simulate uh, acute appendicitis clinically. So you need to remember these differential diagnoses as well. But uh, the most important point that you remember in the clinical presentation is pain at the McBurney's point associated with nausea and vomiting. Now we come to the morphology of acute appendicitis. So keeping all those points of etiopathogenesis in mind, uh, we can understand these features. So in morphology, first we come to the gross examination. So in the gross examination, we know that there is inflammation which is going on in the appendix. So there will be swelling. The um, appendix will appear swollen, dilated. Then the cirrhosa. In the early stages, there will be increased congestion. So there will be congested, congested blood vessels which will be seen in the wall of the appendix in the cirrhosa outer surface. They will be seen with prominence. And in the later stages, when the inflammation reaches up to the cirrhosa, so the cirrhosa gets covered with this uh, yellowish exudates. So it becomes dull in appearance. Normally, the cirrhosa is shiny, uh, but when there are uh, when it is covered with the purulent exudates, then it becomes dull in appearance. And other areas can show the redness. So, erythematous areas can also be seen like this and you know that ruber is a cardinal sign for inflammation. So, this is seen in case of the gross specimen of appendicitis. So, appendix becomes edematous, swollen, then early on the congested blood vessels are seen on the cirrhosa, but later on the cirrhosa becomes dull due to presence of exudates. So, outer surface shows redness, congested blood vessels and a covering of purulent exudates in the cirrhosa. And when we see the cut surface, so this is the cut surface of the appendix, this is the wall of the appendix and this is the mucosa. The mucosa is pale and it is showing areas of hemorrhage and mucosal ulceration. So, in this area you can see there is mucosal ulceration and hemorrhage. So, this is the gross appearance of the mucosa. Now we come to the microscopy. So microscopy, uh, there is inflammation, increased intraluminal pressure. They will so they will be mucosal ulceration. So in the appendix there are four layers. First is mucosa, then submucosa, then there is muscle layer, and lastly there is cirrhosa. So in all the layers there will be inflammation composed of neutrophils, but the neutrophilic infiltration of the muscularis propria, the muscle layer, it is diagnostic. It is pathognomic for acute appendicitis. And But inflammation by neutrophils can be seen in all the layers. But you have to remember what is diagnostic? The presence in the muscular layer is diagnostic. Now, uh, in the mucosa, we can see there can be ulceration like you see in this picture. This is the mucosa and these are the mucosal glands. And here you can see the mucosa is ulcerated and you can see these areas of hemorrhage and little bit necrosis also is there. So this can be seen in the mucosa. In the submucosa, there are lymphoid infiltrates and there, is, there are lymphoid follicles which can show hyperplasia in the submucosa. So in the submucosa here there are lymphoid follicles which can show the hyperplasia and the cirrhosa can show congested dilated blood vessels. So these are the points that you have to remember in the microscopy of acute appendicitis and we can see that in this figure there are presence of neutrophils and neutrophils they are having the lobe nucleus. So these are neutrophils which are present in the wall of the appendix.
again in this picture you can see there is necrotic debris and there are neutrophils in the wall of the appendix so neutrophils in the microscopy they will appear in the form of their lobed nucleus while when we see lymphocytes they are simply rounded so in this pictures you can see all this neutrophilic inflammatory infiltrate in the wall of the appendix which is most important feature for diagnosing appendicitis so this is how we draw the diagram for acute appendicitis i will uh, make a separate video on how to draw this in the uh, as a part of the microscopy series and will upload soon uh, so here you see in the appendix there is the outermost layer which is the mucosa so this is mucosal lining epithelium which is showing ulceration then there is uh, lamina propria showing these glands and congested blood vessels then there is lamina propria then submucosa showing the lymphoid follicles which have become hyperplastic then there is the muscle layer composed of smooth muscle cells and it is showing again the infiltration by the neutrophils lastly comes the serosa serosa has these congested blood vessels and fibro uh, vascular connective tissue and again the neutrophils the neutrophils uh, will be seen will be drawn in all the layers in a diagram of acute appendicitis so i will uh, upload separate video on the on the details of microscopy uh, now we come to the complication this is the last part so when there is inflammation going on and uh, it can cause acute suppurative appendicitis and all whole of the appendix will be filled with pus then they can due to the uh, vascular compromise there can be gangrenous necrosis of the whole of the appendix so appendix can turn gangrenous and can become necrosed this is another complication for appendicitis then uh, when there is necrosis and thinning of the appendix wall then it can also perforate and later on it can cause suppurative peritonitis lastly uh, sometimes the pus can collect in the area just around the appendix so there can be periappendicular abscess also as a complication of acute appendicitis so uh, all these were the important points for appendicitis you should remember the causes the pathogenesis and most importantly the gross and microscopy i hope this video is helpful and uh, feedback is most welcome in the comment section and thank you very much